All right, so this is going to be a quick tutorial about valence electrons. All right, so what are valence electrons? They're electrons that are used to bond atoms. For main group elements, this means the electrons that are on the outermost electron shell, or what's called the valence shell. Each group has the same number of valence electrons. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And this is the reason why elements in the same group have similar properties. So to kind of explain that, I have this drawing right here that shows the valence shells of certain groups on the periodic table. So we have group 1, group 14, group 17, and group 18. Um, in this first one here, we have, we have hydrogen. And, and the red shell on every single one of these is representing the valence shell. And as you can see, this one has one valence electron on that outside shell, on that valence shell. Lithium, which is in the same group, just right underneath H, has one valence electron on that valence shell, and so does sodium. So if you actually draw the Bohr models for each of these atoms in, a, in the same group, you'll notice that they all have the same number of valence electrons. Same with group 14, they all have four on the outside. So carbon has four, silicon has four. Group 17, fluorine has seven, chlorine has seven. Group 18, this gets a little bit trickier because helium has two, it has, a, it, has a, it has a two on its outside shell, where neon has eight and argon has eight, so helium's kind of the exception to the rule, but we're going to talk more about that later. So, for all intents and purposes, valence electrons are the electrons that are on the outside electron shell, and each group has the same number of valence electrons, Okay. So that's basically what I just answered the question right here. How are valence electrons related to groups? Well, valence electrons are the same in each group. So that first group all has one valence electron. That second group all has two. And we, we did this uh, in, the, in the valence electrons activity in class. So should, this is kind of be a review. This should kind of be uh, tightening the screws a little bit on your understanding of valence electrons. And as you can see, helium right here has two, but the rest of them have eight. Now, the reason why helium only has uh, two is because it's how many electrons it has. If it had eight, it would fill that, that outside shell with eight, but it's, it's the only exception. But the rest of them kind of goes in order, one through eight. Okay, how does each element become stable? All right, an, an atom with a filled valence shell tends to be stable. Okay, a way of thinking about this can be that the universe wants atoms to have filled valence shells. Now, what do I mean by filled valence shells? If you remember from our Bohr models, you can put two on that first shell, two electrons on that first shell, eight on the next shell. Um, in the next shell, you can have eight as well, up to 18, though. Uh, we're going to talk more about that later. So how can each element become stable based on this filling of the shells? Well, let's look at group one right here. Group one has one electron on the outside valence shell. An easy way to make any of these atoms stable or have a filled valence shell is to just get rid of this one electron okay you can add seven electrons if you want but it's actually easier just to get rid of this one valence electron so if you have this lithium right here just get rid of that one electron you have this sodium right here that one electron on the outside just get rid of it and what would happen to both of these is they would both have a positive one charge because you're getting rid of that one electron hydrogen is kind of the exception because it only has it has one shell but it's actually easier to just get rid of it um, so everything in group one would have a positive one charge because you would be getting rid of one of those electrons. Again, because the universe wants the atoms to have filled valence shells. Okay, let's go skip over to group 17. Um, fluorine has seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Uh, and again, the universe wants it to be filled. It wants that shell to be filled. And the easy way to think about it as getting filled is you can just add one more electron. If you add one more electron, now you will have eight valence electrons on fluorine, and it will be more stable. That's what the universe wants. So if you add one electron to this, now this charge will become negative one because you added a negative. Same with chlorine. It has seven electrons on the outside of it, seven valence electrons. If you add one, now it's going to have a negative one charge. So if you notice, everything in group 17 is going to have a negative one charge when it has a filled valence shell. Group one, it's going to have a positive one charge if it has a filled valence shell. Group 18 is kind of the exception. They're already filled. That means they're not going to have a charge. They're, they're already as stable as they can be. Uh, so, so they're, and more or less, they just don't want any other electrons or they don't want to get rid of any of their electrons. Um, they're fine just the way they're at, just the way they are. Okay? So let's go to this next slide. What is the charge of each element when it has a filled valence shell? Well, we already went over this first one. It wants to just kick off that, that last electron. Um, on its valence shell to, so it's filled 
Um, so that means everything in this column is going to be plus one charge because it got rid of one negative. It's easier to get rid of one negative than to add seven of them. Okay, for the second column, it's going to have a positive two charge because it's just going to get rid of these two valence electrons. Remember, these numbers represent the valence electrons in each group. It's easier to get rid of those two and have a positive charge than add six. Okay, same with this one. It's easier to get rid of three electrons than add five, so it's going to be plus three. The next one, it's right in the middle. You can either get rid of four electrons or you can add four electrons. So because of that, this fourth group can either have a positive or negative four charge. All right, now it kind of has a turning point. Now this has five valence electrons. It can get filled by getting rid of five electrons, or it could just add three. And since three is a smaller number, it's going to add three electrons, which means everything in this column is going to have a negative three charge. Okay, for the six, it's going to add two electrons, so it's going to be negative two. The seven, we already talked about, that's going to be negative one, because it's just going to add one electron. And these are already filled, so they're not going to do anything with the electrons, so they just have a zero charge. Okay, so this is going to be the... This is going to be the charge based on filled valence shells for each of these, uh, the main group elements. All right, last but not least, we're going to talk about cations and anions. Cations are basically just, or anions are just basically negative ions. A good way of thinking of it says A-N, A negative ion. That's kind of how I look at it. A negative ion is going to be anion. And a positive ion is going to be a cation. Some people like to think of it as like cats being positive. Um, so it's a way of thinking of... Uh, positive ion. So cat ion is a positive ion. So here's some examples. Lithium, it's positive, so it's going to be a cation. Oxygen, two negative, it's going to be an anion. Magnesium, two plus, cation because it's positive. And last but not least, we have fluorine, negative ion, which is going to be an anion. Okay, so that's the basis of valence electrons and the ions that are produced for each group in the periodic table. If you have any questions, let me know.